Okay, thank you, John. Um, I'm just going to kind of sum up the challenges for these systems. As John just discussed, controlling particular matter is going to be important. Um, I've seen several questions in the chat box about the cost. The startup cost for these is high. Um, our colleagues at the Environmental Finance Center are working hard to crunch numbers, um, but there's, um, and, and their conclusions will be included in our final report. Um, but there's outstanding questions that I'll talk about in a minute that are going to inform that, um, that we've not been able to address on our project. Um, additional challenges that these technologies require a lot more time to operate and maintain than a traditional heating system, so they're not going to be a good fit for every farmer. Um, also, and this makes agronomists cringe, but we are losing the poultry litter nitrogen. Almost all of it is being converted to N2 in the thermal process and is not available for you know, agronomic use locally. And that's generally, in our area, the most valuable component of poultry litter is the nitrogen. Um, also, while we've made some inroads into establishing ash markets, we do not have a, a consistent way for our poultry growers with ash to connect with end users who are interested in purchasing it. And if anyone on this call has suggestions for us, we would welcome them. But there are significant opportunities. We think it's clear that phosphorus can be recycled with these technologies. We can move phosphorus from high-density animal production areas to crop production areas that rely a lot on commercial fertilizer. Um, and that, tr that sale can generate new revenue for poultry growers with respect to their existing nutrients. Um, these technologies are able to reduce fossil fuel use, um, specifically here propane for our projects. Um, and we think that there may be important opportunities related to bird health. Um, almost every poultry grower is incentivized in some way to conserve propane, whether they're paying for it out of pocket or whether their use of propane is, is used as a basis to, to determine the cost that they're going to pay for their birds. And in the winter, Bringing in fresh air to ventilate a house to improve air quality requires propane. So in the cold weather season, growers are um, grappling with using propane efficiently and keeping the house well ventilated and, and keeping good air quality in the house. Um, if poultry growers have a, an on-farm fuel that's abundant and inexpensive, they can start ventilating solely for air quality. And that could have an impact on winter feed conversion. Winter feed conversion rates typically drop by a few points in the cold weather because of the um, challenges with ventilating as much as you'd like to. And so remaining questions. One of the big ones is long-term performance of these technologies. Um, if they were to be cost-shared through the EQIP program, the expected life would be 10 years. Um, to our knowledge, there, is no, there are no systems that have been in operation for that long. Um, and again, we have questions about how these could be used um, to improve house air quality and improve um, bird health. This is based on anecdotal evidence so far from poultry growers who have been using these systems and seeing improve, improvements in bird health and feed conversion. Um, and, and that raises questions about the carbon footprint because it may not just be propane savings. It, feed is the largest carbon footprint component of producing poultry. So if we can improve feed conversion, we reduce the carbon footprint. Um, and again, ash and biochar market development is going to be um, very important to support additional, support our existing farmers and additional projects. 